Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to this webinar on integrating MS Teams in Amatuba. And um, for the next few minutes, we're just going to spend some time with you talking through um, some of the pedagogical aspects and why, um, or supplying you maybe with a few use cases on how to use MS Teams in Amatuba. And then also we'll um, do a demonstration in the end. And I'll be presenting today with my lovely colleague, Mashudu. And uh, Mashiro will take us through through MS Teams towards the latter part of the webinar. Thank you, Mashiro. Okay, so what we're going to cover today, first of all, why Teams? Um, why should we integrate MS Teams on Amatuba? And then focusing a little bit on building your digital space, uh, what type of engagement can you foster um, if you integrate MS Teams on your Amatuba website or your Amatuba site, um, how you can build relationships through presence. Um, we're going to look very briefly at channel posts and polls and then focus a little bit on group work and collaboration. I want to say that this is really just like an introductory session um, supplying you with some options and then you can go and explore those options on your own. So group work then within that breakout rooms, whiteboard files, and then lastly, the demonstration of how do you set up an actual MS team on Amatuba. Okay, so what does MS Teams bring? Um, so it is an interactive collaborative classroom with an online learning community in an intuitive user-friendly environment. Currently at UCT, all students are enrolled on MS Teams and where that is used mainly for, for communication as well. And I want to say especially for, for, for short-term communication with your students. Um, so it provides them also with an opportunity to prepare them um, with 21st century skills preparation for the workplace, um, working with, I want to say, project management tools, so to speak. How do you communicate with people across teams? Um, so how do you communicate with other students and your lecturers? So it's not just the traditional email route, but they're um, providing them with different means of communication as well. Okay, my apologies, it seems like. Okay, so, and then for me, it's also about the blend. Um, I have a few pictures here of blenders, and I think that what I'm really trying to say is that if you can think through how to incorporate MS Teams in your classroom before class starts, that's actually the best way to go about. We need to incorporate this from the design phase um, so that when you look at your course outline, think about where are the opportunities and where are the activities that you would want students to communicate in either Amatuba um, or then in MS Teams, and we're going to show you some of the options um, in just a few slides. So, but also the blend between the online and the the face-to-face -face space. So, um, there's an additional blend here between Amatuba and MS Teams, and making sure that uh, how do you focus on asynchronous communication as to your synchronous communication. Okay, then university classrooms um, is also a place where we can foster learning community and MS Teams is one of those places. So um, uh, one of the use cases at UCT is the MUM 20, um, 1020F tutorials um, course that is run. And so you can create tutorial groups and within each of these groups, students can communicate with each other. It's also a good place um, where you can foster peer-to-peer -peer learning we know students start answering each other's questions, um, hopefully spontaneously, um, if you foster such a culture in, in your classroom. And that's where um, some of the deeper learning can also occur um, when they help other students with answers and, and go and look for, for answers themselves. Um, so Amatuba will be, I want to say, the backbone structure of your teaching course. So this webinar specifically focuses on Amatuba as it's part of the Amatuba webinar series. And how do you communicate with students using the Amatuba? And then in the next circle, you will see the, the additional features that MS Teams will provide or can provide um, on top of the Amatuba experience. So in Amatuba, you can send announcements to your students. You can set up all the assignments, um, your tests and quizzes, um, your grades, that's the previous grade book, and the managed files from a lecturer point of view. 
there are HTML pages and then discussions, and you can also grade those discussions. So that's the advantage that you would have in the Amatuba function. If you, when we move over to the team circle, um, there's the chat function that you can embed and that students can communicate with each other in, I want to say, almost real time, very quickly, very easily, um, in an intuitive way. You can schedule online meetings, synchronous meetings. Um, so that is actually the preferred online meeting tool at UCT going forward. Um, so you can schedule those and you can schedule once off meetings or you can schedule recurring meetings. Let's say you meet with your class every Tuesday at 3 p.m. On, on the roster and then you schedule that meeting and you can embed those links into Amatuba and students can just um, get it all from the same place, so to speak. Um, in just by accessing Amatuba and the links will, will be to the team's um, meetings. Discussions that you can create, group work, there are, we're also going to look at some of the group work now that you can have, but um, I think the another added advantage here within the group work is the collaborative space. So within those tutorial groups, for example, they have a chat amongst themselves, but they can also share a variety of files with each other, where they're uploading um, PDFs, Word documents, um, and want to say anything that can go onto SharePoint, so any MS Teams documents, um, videos, um, yeah, so quite a variety of documents um, and media that they can share. And then also collaborative documents, because SharePoint is the backbone, and you can also let them work collaboratively on, on documents, and you can see or depending on what your desired output would be. Okay, so we strongly recommend that when you think through, um, or if you think of using MS Teams to think through some kind of a weekly rhythm, one of the, um, there's a, an example on the screen where you can literally divide it into days of the week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday can be used to, to catch up and maybe delve deeper into, into content. So if you look at the, the first one, release course module and send Amatuba announcements, so that's based on Amatuba. Um, you can see that the, the blue blocks or the Amatuba blocks and then the purple ones um, is, is where you can use the, the MS Teams integration as well. So release course, send the announcement and then the self-study that continues Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday on Amatuba. You can maybe ask them to share an interesting article media topic for fun. If you don't want to grade this, create a safe space for them in MS Teams. They can share documents, they can comment on each other's um, findings, uh, maybe ask questions. So it all depends, will also depend on how you set up the prompt. But I would strongly encourage also that you leave um, spontaneous spaces for, for students to connect with each other. And then there's a practice quiz via test that would be on Amatuba and the team's discussion is on Friday. So this is just an example of a learning path that you can create um, for students in a week. So how do you build your digital space? First of all, we need to ask ourselves the question, who will be using the space? How is your course set up? What is the personality of your course also, so to speak? So. Um, the who would be, is it very lecturer led and um, very heavily dependent on the person that is um, leading the course? Um, also, is there a team of lecturers involved and how do you set that up? How do you communicate that to students? Um, or is it much more tutor led? Is it a combination? And do you want them or do you want them to focus much more on peer integration? Because um, all of these will have specific aspects in MS Teams that you can integrate um, in a more creative way um, to reach the, the goals that you have for your course. Then how do we do this? How do we build this digital space and how will the interaction take place? Um, first of all, I think coming back to the design decisions that you make, decide first of all whether it's going to be synchronous or asynchronous. Um, most likely it's going to be a combination of these two. Where are you going to apply the synchronous sessions and when and what does the asynchronous work then actually look like? What we also want to do is um, if you look at the community of inquiry model, we want to build relationships through presence. So that's the lecturer presence, but also the student presence. So student student interaction is something that we strongly encourage, um, you know, amongst 
students for peer learning, um, that's most likely tend to, to be learning that sticks. Um, so, so think creatively of how you do that. Um, so you can do either communication, setting the meetings. As we said, it could be a once-off, it could be a recurring meeting. And you can, set, you can set the meetings. There's an Outlook integration as well that you can apply. And then additionally, there's also the function of the private chat. So participants can initiate a conversation or conversations with each other because they have um, access to, to MS Teams. And Mashudu is going to show us how that team looks when it's created within your Amatuba site. And also um, just the visuals on the screen here where it says that um, some of the multimedia that's also involved in both the meetings and the private chats would just be the text, the audio, video that you can attach, or then you can actually screen share live as I'm doing at this present moment. Okay, so communication and channel posts. Um, just a note on the side, please note that all tools are, are optional. Uh, that we're going to to show you, but think through your course, make the ones or pick the ones that's most applicable, and maybe you pick one for next semester. And if you feel you're comfortable using that type of tool, then next semester you you pick another one. And when I say tool in these cases, these are tools that's embedded onto MS Teams, um, for example, a polling tool um, or a whiteboard tool, etc. Okay. So when a team is created, you can see there will be a post and a banner um, with a very nice heading, so clearly distinguishing it. Um, and there at the bottom, you can see already there is a reply button that students can, can start um, conversations. Um, so just some of the additional tools um, tools that I re re refer was referring to. So Poly, Poly is a tool that's integrated um, in your MS Teams integration. Um, it's not just if you embed an MS team onto Ambatuba, it's also if you use MS Teams in, in other instances. Um, so, but Poly is um, integrated, one, almost one of the native ones, so you can quite easily create polls. And this is especially useful if you are in synchronous sessions with students to, to activate that. And uh, Mashiru can show us how to do that. And um, there's the additional forms. If you have used Google Forms before, so or Google the, the survey form, so you can just literally use um, the forms one that's the, the native um, Microsoft integration. And then um, if you are not familiar with WooClap, WooClap is a very sophisticated uh, type of um, polling tool that you can use for, for tools, um, for polls, for surveys. Um, so and very useful even if you're in classes in, in synchronous communication settings and then you can have that and you can see immediate results as well um, and in I want to say in real time as people answer you you will get the results as well. Okay so group work and collaboration what is it that your students need to be able to do? So first make that decision do you want them to discuss something using text do you want them to maybe send voice notes? They can also do that or videos. They can do that both in channel posts that would most likely be asynchronous or during breakout rooms that would be synchronous. And then collaboration, more group work, or if you um, have a more project-based type of setup in your course, what are the shared outputs? They can use MS Teams to either do brainstorming um, before they submit the assignment. You can use it for curation purposes and then also for production spaces where they can go and, and create um, the outputs or, or the learning artifacts. And um, where these would be stored, for example, could be MS Teams files and then or some of the other applications. Um, this is also a possible workaround for if you have um, if you want to create a resource folder, you can do it within your Teams um, structure. So in Amatuba, where it's difficult, students don't see the managed files as big. If you create an MS Teams, it is a possible workaround for you to actually create a space where you can put a few documents for your students to access quite quickly. Um, and I want to say limiting the amount of clicks as well. So in synchronous setups, the breakout rooms, so you can just before I say that, um, depending the, the roles that you will be enrolled in the, the Microsoft team, it's all dependent on the role that you have on the Amatuba site. 
And um, so these integrates as the teams are connected. Um, so only meeting organizers can create and manage breakout rooms. So if you want that to be different, you need to plan for that. Um, organizers can send announcements to all rooms. So during the breakout rooms, you can send out announcements to say, maybe I'm going to extend um, the meeting time with three minutes, um, something like that. And latecomers can be assigned to a room. You can assign them. After the breakout rooms, what are some of the features? So organizers can track interactions that took place in breakout room chats. Um, so if, if people communicated there in the chats, the files that were shared, um, you can also see the, the whiteboard application. If you have activated the whiteboard, each of the groups can have their own whiteboard. So I think that's quite a nifty feature um, that you can let them um, work on that and then and share that afterwards during the feedback in the, the bigger group, um, if you so wish. And then breakout room meetings can also be recorded. Um, so if you have for whatever reason you want them to do so, that's also a possibility. And then collaboration of files. So you can see here there's a screenshot as well. You can decide on the location where you want it in SharePoint to be. Um, you can create a new doc, you can upload documents um, or share documents that is in either PowerPoint, Word. So as I said, everything in SharePoint. Many people can edit a document together at the same time. Um, so it's, yeah, in the same time, depending, it, it doesn't mean that they have to be in a synchronous setup. It just can be that the one person is in Rondebosch and the other one is in Kailicha and um, they both happen to be on the document at the same time. Um, then familiar formatting, editing tools, some, the Microsoft suite. So students should be at this stage um, quite comfortable with that. If they're not, this is also building into their digital literacy skills. And then you can access the version history but that's only in the desktop app and browser. And for those of you that are also, um, if you are in, if you are in Teams, you can set the default whether you want it to open files in your browser or whether you want it to open it in the desktop app. And then for further MS Teams functionality. Um, I've provided some links because we're going to share this um, the slide deck with you afterwards that you can go. But um, I'm quickly going to go out of my presentation and just take you into these ones. So if you go into the ICTS MS Teams um, site, there you go. I've linked um, the link is there in the slide deck for you. There's some more information about Microsoft Teams. I would imagine that most people and most lecturers at this stage are quite comfortable with MS Teams and how to use that. So we're going to focus more on the integration of Teams onto Amatuba. Um, and I want to show you that if you go onto SILS webpage and you click on Amatuba, there's a quick Amatuba link towards the right. And in the left navigation pane, you can scroll down to staff resources, select staff resources, and you, you will see there's videos. There are videos. There are a few getting started guides, but here under the tool guides, if you look at activities, the last one there is MS Teams. And if I click on MS Teams, you will see that it's opening up a PDF document um, that says MS Teams Guide for Amatuba. And it's an eight page document that will show you exactly how to integrate Amat um, MS Teams um, into Amatuba on your course and the options that you have available. And you will see that there are also screenshots um, to guide you in terms of exactly what to expect um, when you go through this process. Okay, so without further ado, um, Oh, I first probably need to check are there questions. Okay, thanks, Mashuda. I see you made a note. Collabor collaboration in documents can also take place in the Office 365 platform. Okay, Richard, thank you. I see about your, your notes about SharePoint. Okay. Yes. Okay, we'll we'll look into that. Thanks, thanks, Richard. Are there any other questions at this stage? 
If there are no questions, feel, please feel free to unmute at any stage. Um, Mashira is now going to demo or demonstrate um, the integration of MS Teams in Amatuba. Um, feel free to unmute if you have questions. Um, I also would want to encourage you to follow along in your own sandbox if you have one, or feel free to just listen and, and follow along with um, Mashiru. And um, yeah, I will also look at the chat if you have any questions there. Thanks, Mashiru. Uh, thank you, Nadine, for that wonderful presentation. So I'm going to take you through the demo on how to create or integrate MS Teams into your Amatuba site. So I'll be navigating between um, different different sites during this uh, demonstration. And so, first of all, um, if you go to your Amatuba site, I'm just going to use one of uh, one of my colleagues' sandpit site. Um, you'll see that there are various um, widgets on your home page and so what if you would like to add micro uh, Microsoft Teams widget on your site this is where it will it will appear so I'm just going to show you um, an example of where that has been integrated already and how that looks like on, a, on an existing site so this is an example of a site where the Microsoft Teams widget was added in and so this is where um, this particular user or this particular lecturer would um, would access Microsoft Teams and the students would also access Microsoft Teams from from this link that leads uh, or that is linked to this particular site. So how to get started with um, integrating Microsoft Teams into Amatuba? You'll have to go to on your navigation bar. You'll have to go to manage course and then course admin. And then under the site, under the site setup um, heading there, you have to go to course homepage. And then you'll notice that there is a word there, there is a word there, active, active homepage, Active home page tool, so you need to click on the drop down arrow there. And you'll see that there'll be some options there. Various home page um, setups that you would like to pick. Um, some people prefer having an MS, I mean, a home page without an MS Teams widget. Um, other people prefer a home page with an activity feed. So in this case, we are going to pick the one that has Microsoft Teams. So I'm going to select this course home page with Microsoft Teams. So there is also like a little brief description of the different um, home page settings down below. So I'm going to select that course home page with Microsoft Teams and then click on apply. Now it takes just a few minutes to prepare your team. So as soon as I click on apply, if I go back to the course home page, you'll notice that the MS Teams widget has now been added. But in this case, I need to click on create course team. Now that's a process that will take a few minutes to, to process. So I'm going to then click on create course team. You can select as to whether you want learners to be able to create their own new private channels or not. I'm not going to select that. Then I'm going to click on create course team. Now it'll take a while to create the course team and sometimes you might need to refresh until you see that your team is ready. Once your team is ready, you'll see that there'll be a message that will indicate that the team is ready. Um, in some cases, there'll be like a tick to say and then a message to say the team is ready or. Um, or you will see that there'll be a link to your team um, that will show that you 
your team is ready for access or you can click on that link that should take you to to that particular team. So like um, in this case here, you can see that it generated a link. Um, this is the name of the list. So the name of the Microsoft Teams team will be the exactly the same as the name of your Amatuba site. And the link that you'll find there that that will be what is the Microsoft Teams link. So by clicking on that link, it will take you to the um, Microsoft team itself. So I can see this one is taking a while to process. So I'll just go ahead and. Uh, OK, I'll just go and open it from, but you can see if I click on the link, it prompts me to open link which will then take me to the Microsoft Teams application that I've already downloaded on my on my desktop. So on my desktop, this is where it will take me. To this particular space here. And this is what it will look like. But because um, in this case, I'm already a member that has been added into this team. Um, it's, it's, it's there isn't a there. The, if if I was a new member that was being added, there was going to be a pop up window that asks if I want to be, if I want to join these that the, that I've been invited into a team and as to whether I want to join that particular team. And so one would then click on the join button, the lecturer or the organizer or the person that created the team will be notified and informed that there has been someone who's requesting to join this team and then they'll accept and then that's how um, the student will then uh, be added into into the team. So this is what it will look like and you can see that it trans it takes the person out of Amatuba straight into the Microsoft Teams app. So ideally users should have downloaded the MS Teams app. And they should have logged into their profile into their system to the UCT system as well. But because they're also logging in from Amatuba, it will pick up their um, it will pick up their their profile. And if they have not signed in, they might then be required to sign in. So what it does is that if a person was a student on Amatuba, they were added as a student on Amatuba and they're a student in the class list. When they are added into the team or when they join the team, rather, they will then be added as a member. If the person was a lecturer. Or a. Uh, or a lecturer or if they had um, support staff role, a support staff role, they will then become owners of the team. So in this case, I was added in as a student and I have then been added into this team as a student by my lecturer. And so this is what it would look like. Now I'm just want to just see if this one has processed. Yes, OK, so the team has been created, as you can see. And as I said, you will see that it will have um, a link there that will appear and by clicking on that link and joining opening link, it will take the person into uh, into MS Teams. And in this case, this is the pop up box that I was talking about earlier that will pop up to say um, that I, sh I want to join this particular team, Donna's Bright Space Training. There is one member in it already, which is the owner of this particular team. And so then I would join that uh, that that particular team uh, that particular team then by joining it does not mean that I by default will be added in the main uh, the owner of that team has to accept me has to um, accept that particular participant so that they become a member of that team so now you can see that this is very it's a normal Microsoft teams that you have used with all the features that um, you know that we are familiar with already from the MS Teams app. And there are some, there's a new uh, tool at the top there, like you'll notice that there is a bright space tab. Um, what this does is that it's simply a window that if students wish to log in or access 
um, a bright, uh, access Brightspace or Amatuba that they can then go in and log in, click on there, enter their UCT login details, and then access Amatuba from there. There are other various um, tools that you'll see on your team. And as you can see, it generates or creates a class team. Some of these tools or features we don't necessarily use um, as UCT. Some lecturers have used it for, um, for tutorials in, in, in terms of things like assignments, but uh, something like the grades is, is what you would rather use Amatuba. You would rather use the Amatuba grades tool for as opposed to using Microsoft Teams. So some of the class team, some of the class teams class teams tools might not necessarily be useful um, for you, but um, they they are available um, on a more, you know, on a, on a uh, you know, they're more, they're available on Amatuba instead. So, but there are some of the tools that you might rather want to use as uh, Nadine has already relayed some of the tools or some of the function, some of the key, even classroom activities that can be used, like, such as collaboration and communication. OK, so now we are going to look at how you can set up a meeting uh, where students can then, and on Amatuba, an MS Teams meeting on Amatuba, that where students can now um, join, a, either it's a discussion or a class or a lecture, and this is separate to this team here, but this is something that you would have to do on Amatuba. So from this team, when it comes to setting up a meeting, what you can do is you can under general channel under the general channel, or if you have created a channel, you can um, schedule a meeting or use the meet now option to create a meeting. So you can schedule a meeting and this will create a pop up um, where you can insert all the meeting details and meeting information and invitations that can then where I mean where the participants can then be invited into a meeting or you can opt to use the meet now button and invite your participants into a meeting. So this is one way that you can set up a meeting within this team. However, this is not going to be connected to Amatuba. They will not receive a notification on Amatuba, for example, to say that there is a meeting that it will be taking place um, on that on the you know on that particular team. There is another way that you can create a meeting on Amatuba. Some people prefer um, adding meeting links in content pages, for example, where students can easily access meeting links in their content pages, either content pages, announcements, um, or even the activity, the activity feed tool. So I'm going to demonstrate how to create or add a meeting link on Amatuba, an MS Teams meeting link on Amatuba. So in your content page, I'm going to find one of the folders on Amatuba and create an HTML page. I'm going to name this MS Teams test. And what I want to do is I want to add a meeting link, an MS Teams meeting link into this particular page. I can click on the quick insert quick link button and then scroll down to Microsoft Teams meeting. And then what it will show is that the sign in button, just click on it usually doesn't require any sign in. Yeah, as you can see. And then click on create meeting link.
Now you'll see that uh, there'll be a box there prompting you to add the meeting title. So I'm going to name this test meeting. And then I'm going to insert the start date. I'm happy with the start date and the time and also what time the meeting will end. And then I will create the meeting. Okay, so it has created the meeting, but now I want to insert the link to this meeting into this page. I am going to click on insert and the link will be inserted there. So what will happen is that when students click on this particular link, it will take them to a normal MS Teams meeting like we are having right now. But the downside of this is that it doesn't create, it creates a meeting that will not show up anywhere in their calendar or your calendar. So it's simply a platform where they click on the link, you go into a um, you go into a, a meeting, but the fortunate or the good thing about it is that if there's any interaction in the chat or there is a recording or there's any activity uh, like the use of the whiteboard, those items will be recorded in the chat. So I just want to show you how that will look like. Um, we tested an example earlier on. And this is an example of a team, um, of a team meeting that was created through access on a Brightspace, um, through a like on a Brightspace content page. And what it allowed us to do was we could record in there and we could chat and everything that was in there was then appeared in our chat on the Microsoft Teams app. So everything or all the activity that took place was then added over there on the uh, uh, on our Teams on the on the chat tool on Microsoft Teams. So that is as much as um, you know this this uh, this goes. However, you can reuse this particular link and recopy copy link paste it elsewhere if you want to copy it on multiple pages. You can just copy this particular link and paste it elsewhere. So you can copy paste into a different page via email announcements and it will still be that uh, still be the same the same the same meeting link. Um, the disadvantage of this is that when people join it, uh, this particular link, it does not really indicate the date and time. As I said, it does not appear on the calendar, either your calendar or the students' calendars. So they will not really have an awareness of what time this meeting will be taking place or the date. So it's always good to include in the instructional text or even in the meeting link to say, Tuesday at uh, nine o'clock or Tuesday nine to ten. I'm really hoping this is something that will eventually be ironed out as um, as we continue to use this Microsoft Teams tool on Amatuba. But that would be a way around it or work um, around if you if you intend on using this tool. So this is a way that you can add a an MS Teams link into your content tool. You can also um, insert a meeting link or create a meeting link in announcements in a very in a similar way to this that I've just demonstrated uh, by using the insert link option. Um, but then you would have to go under the third third party third party heading. And then you can also create or set up a meeting in the activity feed tool using the insert link tool, which is quite similar to, to this process that I've just demonstrated. So I think at this point, 
Um, this will bring us to the close of this, but I wondered as to whether there were any questions or requests for any demonstrations of what we covered earlier, um, such as the polls, such as, such as using the polls tool um, Nadine had mentioned earlier, but I think we'll look at questions right now if there are any questions. And then I'll just do a quick demo on the poly tool so that people are so that you're aware of where you can find it and how you can use it. Mashuda? Are there any questions at this there, point? Um, there's two questions in the chat from Richard. Um, so Richard, I'll, I'll read out the first question. If you want to add anything, um, please feel free to do so. So Richard is asking, is there an ICS or probably ICTS import tool plan for Amatuba in the future? It works well in Vula for synchronizing between MS Teams meeting that I've set up for students with the LMS calendar. I'm not too sure about that. I think that might be a question for the LT team mm. that they might be able to, to respond. So I think we'll check with the LT team and get back to you on that. We will uh, post yes. the response in this in our chat in this in this particular chat so that everyone has access to that. Uh, yeah, just to clarify, um, what you can do in for Kai um, is, I did, while I was listening to this, I was, I was thinking it's just much easier to do it the way I do it, which is set up the MS Teams meeting in Outlook uh, if it's a recurring meeting. Download the ICS file from Outlook, import the ICS file into Vula, and then that updates the, the calendar in Vula. Um, what I was doing for Amatuba this year was uh, basically just manually copying it because it doesn't import ICS files. Um, but yeah, I was I was wondering if that's if that's something in the future. I think having seen your your demonstration demonstration, not to, um, my sense is that it's still going to be a lot easier just to set up those meetings in advance in through MS Teams rather than trying to set them up in you know, through Amatuba because then you know you get the calendar synchronization and yeah everything's in one place and the reminders and and all of that. Which you don't get if you setting up the meeting directly from a lesson in mm, in Amatuba, mm, yeah. unfortunately. And we are really hoping this is something. I mean, that's very critical, um, especially for students uh, who I think just having a having that calendar entry makes a big difference. Makes a huge difference. Yeah, it does. Um, mm. I've definitely found that uh, you know students. Attendance at seminars just improved dramatically since I started you know, scheduling it in in the student calendar, and, and yeah, not just scheduling it on the LMS calendar, but you know, directly in the student calendars as well. Um, Right. And, and that that probably links to your next question, Richard, in the chat. Is that you're also asking, is there a, um, is there a recurring meeting function? Um, so, and and speaking to your point exactly, you know, you said it it looks like it's easier to to set up the meeting in Outlook. So I saw that if you if you linked, I'm quickly going to screen share. So there is a way, but I don't know how this integrates. I see Desi posted, posted something about the integration of the Outlook calendar, and I think we do, we quickly need to look at that as well. But if you are in the, the team, so the, the MS team that was created, so this is now my my Brightspace training, my Amatuba training sandbox, um, or MS Teams channel. If you click on the channel, you can see you can upload the class. And if you schedule from Meet here, so Meet now will schedule an instant meeting. Whereas if you schedule a meeting, sorry, it's opened in my, on my other screen. Um, so yeah, on the meeting there, it says does not repeat. So yes, it is possible to, to schedule a recurring meeting. I think the bigger question is how do we integrate this with the Outlook calendar? Um, Des, maybe do you want to speak to that? So 
Sorry, I'm eating lunch while I'm listening. <laughs> Sorry, Des. <laughs> Thank you for posting the resource. N no problem, but we can definitely look at that. Um, we, we managed to find this bit of information for Mishka um, last week. Um, so I'm sure we'll be able to find something um, to answer Richard's uh, question about the inter integration with Teams from Outlook. Thank you. I'll make a note. Thanks, Des. No problem. Was there a need for anybody else that Mashuru, she said she's willing to do the poly um, integration or demo that? Um, so I've just quickly tested that uh, that scheduling feature, what uh, that you, just, you were just talking about now, um, Nadine, and it does appear on the MS Teams calendar, but you'd have to be the owner or the owner of the of the team to be able to to schedule that or so I tried doing that in a site I mean, or in a team where I was a student uh, in one of my colleagues site and I couldn't uh, I couldn't schedule a meeting but when I did so using um, a site where I'm an owner I was able to create that test meeting and it has shown me a that there is a meeting on the calendar. So I think that would be the best workaround um, that everything is still contained in that specific team, which is your Amatuba teams in inverted commas, and that you can set up a meeting where students can then have uh, you know, a calendar entry and also be able to engage directly um, on the team with the particular meeting or have discussions and have any material or resources that they share contained in that team. So it definitely works and maybe this might be the best the best option at this point. All right, um, so I think I should quickly share how to how to use Polly. Um, oh, oh, this is what I was talking about, uh, that I created a team in one of the, in the in, in my, you know, MS to Brightspace or Amatuba team using this tool here that Nadine was just um, talking about just now. And it has indicated or showed me a calendar, a calendar entry there. So, which is pretty much, uh, it's exciting to know that 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 feature is available. So I'm going to create a meeting. Um, I just want to locate a poly into our meeting. And you can create a poly in your channel post. You can create a poly in a meeting chat. It can be used asynchronously or synchronously. Um, it's one of the easiest uh, poly or polls tools that uh, that is used, especially to make lessons or, or lectures in synchronous sessions, more interactive and engaging. People can use it to you know, elicit feedback from students on how the lecture is going. But I'm just going to do a quick demo in this particular um, in our meeting right now so that you have a feel of what you would experience if you were having uh, if you were conducting a poly in your in your classes. So it, I will be doing this in this particular meeting chat. So at the bottom there below your. Uh, your meeting chat box, there are three three little dots messaging extensions. So you click on those three dots and then more three dots messaging extensions and then you should be able to find the poly app there that's where uh, the poly app is so you click on poly i find poly to be more user friendly um especially for asynchronous i mean for synchronous um, sessions you can create a poll in advance and then release it 
uh, keep it or save it and release it later for, um, you know, during a lesson or a lecture, or you can create it live as you are, as you are, as you are in a lecture or lecturing. So, okay. Okay, let me just go back, just create new. And I want to create questions. And how? How are you feeling today? <laughs> And you can add another choice. Um, OK. And you can um, say that this should be a required uh, question. If you're adding more than one question, uh, you could say there should be multiple votes if it was in a case of a, a poll where they were voting. Uh, but this is where you would find that uh, this is where you would find, I mean, how you would create a poll and you can also, there are various other features that you can use here. If you want to change whether you want it to be anonymous or not anonymous, do you want to send it now or do you want to send it later? You can also schedule it for later. So there are various options here that you can apply. As I said, you can save it and then access it later and then send it. Um, at a later stage. So I'm simply going to say send now and what will happen is it will show it's showing me a preview of the poll. And so I'm going to now click on send and what should happen on your screens is that you should have. This pop up on your screens. And that should then allow you to vote. So you can put in your votes. And because I said it's not anonymous, I am able to see people's responses. So I can tell, um, you know, how my students are doing, if it was, you know, in a classroom and who is not, uh, you know, particularly feeling well and follow up on, you know, what could the problem be? But um, yeah, this is how the poly tool would work. Um, in the classroom. You can also use uh, Microsoft Forms, but it is a lot slightly different to polls, but a similar concept. And you would access that from the same, uh, the same place, the messaging extensions, messaging extensions, and then Forms. That is where you would access it. And this one is leading straight to to the questions. Now, what I particularly like about Paul uh, Polly is that there are multiple question options. You have um, question options that will also allow for long questions, uh, long question options if you would like. Uh, there are various various uh, question options that you can pick. So if you Click on the drop down arrow. You'll see there that you can opt multiple choice questions, open ended questions, quizzes, ratings, you know, and all sorts. So that is what you can. That is what you can use. Um, so I think that is pretty much what would bring us to the end of this webinar. I am going to hand over back to you, Nadine, um, for any further information. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much, Mashuri, and thank you, everybody. Um, it's always nice to get the questions so that we can also take that back um, to inform our own practices. I see Richard had a lot, a lot question um, regarding can you add um, Polly to your other meetings or channels as well? Richard, I just checked and I can see if I'm in a different MS Teams channel that wasn't scheduled through Amatuba or created through Amatuba that um, there is also Polly is one of the apps that is available to add there. Um, I see you are typing. Yes, you can. Yeah. 
Um, I just wanted to demonstrate. Uh, I just want to find one of my test teams. So this is a team that is not um, affiliated to Amatuba in any way, and I can even come in here and select more apps. Um, it's a bit of a process, but Poly is there. It's available as a as a tool, so you can use it even in a team that is not affiliated to Amatuba. So you can use it in your chat. You can use it in your channels, private chats, meetings. You can use it almost anywhere on Microsoft Teams. Sorry, Nadine. No, that's good. Thanks, Machudu. And and thank you, Richard. I see also that you say that students have struggled with a whiteboard in MS Teams on Android. Um, so that's also something that we can take back to, to the LT team. So thank you for, for noting that. Hey, see, it's two o'clock. Um, thank you so much for your attendance and your participation. We highly appreciate your feedback um, and your involvement. So if you have any follow up questions, you can always post them in the chat here, but feel free to, to send an email to either myself or Mashudu or copy us both in or either to the, the SILT help desk. And we'd be happy to um, to follow up on, on anything that you, any questions um, or additional comments that you may have. Um, so thank you again for your participation. I hope you have a lovely afternoon and um, yeah, enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you everybody.